and it was a scary day for me. I went to work at seven o'clock in the morning and I didn't get home till 11 p.m., okay? I was, I'm stressed out and I'm rethinking my life right now. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, and we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Shout out to Trucker Bay, the Hogan driver that had the scare of her life. Man, this is a lot of stuff that truck drivers that normally don't talk about, about what happened to them out here in the trucking world. And I said before, as a truck driver, anything liable to happen, anything can and will happen in trucking. Trucking is not all that glamorous. Not all that grammars. Grammars? Not all that glamorous. In the case of Trucker Bay here, unfortunately, she was going down the mountains, heard a loud bang, and boom, all of a sudden her 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 diesel is is flowing all over the place. She had to get away. She was kind of stuck out on the mountains by herself. Had to wait for the tow truck and the DOT and probably hazmat to come over and take care of her. But while she's in the midst of waiting for him, I guess a couple of truck drivers came over to see if their fellow truck her was all right. She's here to tell the story of the scariest moment of her life. So guys, if you get a chance, go over to her channel. Her channel is on TikTok. Her name is Truck Her. And listen to her story about being in a situation and let us know if you've been in the same situation in the comments below, man. You guys take it easy and I will come back at you guys with another one. Peace. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Hey, everybody. Today is going to be a very vulnerable post for me. I know that I was just letting you guys know the new job that I had I started last week with Hogan. And it was going good, but I had the craziest and most scariest experience in my career yesterday. I mean, in my life yesterday. And I just wanted to share it with you guys because I feel like a lot of people get on this app and a lot of other social media apps and they're not vulnerable with you guys and they're not honest about the things that we can go through as drivers risking our lives every day on the road where people don't even care about your safety nor theirs. I'm home. I needed some time to decompress and to recoup from what happened. So I am a local driver with Hogan and I'm dedicated to Target and it's like a one day layover, right? So I did an out of town run on Monday, end up getting stuck in Utah, but I was stuck on a truck that I wasn't supposed to be stuck on. So they sent me on a local run to Vegas. Now from Arizona to Vegas is only five hours. We have an 11 hour clock to drive. So I can make it there and I can make it back home with no problem. So it was supposed to be a turnaround, like go drop the trailer, bring the one back that the Vegas store has and you go home for the day. It was paying really well. So I was like, give me the money, I'm ready to work. I did a pre-trip on the truck, but I've been sleep, slip sitting, day cab, sleepers, everything. And I've been having issues with every truck that I got in. So I reported it to my OM and he gave me a sleeper this time with a refrigerator in it because I told him what was going on and he was like I got you I'm gonna make sure I take care of you so I get in this sleeper it's clean I got a fridge I'm good now I'm driving through uh, Kingman Arizona and if any truck drivers have taken that route to go to Vegas you know that it's very windy very hilly steep downgrades steep upgrades it's a very dangerous drive it's only two lanes each way okay and it can get very dangerous you got to drive slow jaybreak all day i was thirty thousand pounds so i was taking my time but i'm going down this six percent downgrade and i'm like why is my jaybreak not stopping me okay I don't understand why I have my jaybreak on level three, which is the slowest it can go, and I'm still doing 70 down this 6% grade. It's not like it's eight or nine. I was scared, okay? I was scared. I was bricks, you hear me? So now I'm control breaking. I'm hitting my service brake, like slow down. Like I'm going way too fast down this mountain. Like what's up? I got my jaybreak all the way down. I'm control breaking. It's not stopping. I am 
scared. I'm starting to lose control a little bit. And I'm like, bro, what's going on? So I finally get it to slow down to 55. And I'm at the bottom of the mountain, right? At this, the mountain, the way it went, it went down and it had a curve. And then you went up again. So as soon as I hit the curve, I slowed down to 45. I said, okay, now I got to get my momentum to go back up the mountain. So let me go ahead and give it some fuel, hit that pedal. As soon as I try to go up the mountain, I hear this loud boom. Like when I mean loud, I mean loud. I thought I blew a drive tire. I'm like, oh my God, I just blew a tire. What the fudge is going on, right? Boom. Now I am scared. I thought I blew a tire, but I am in a lane, a two-way lane. So I'm like, let me keep driving until I find a shoulder, right? At least I'm going to slow it down. I lose all power to my truck. I mean, my truck went in straight limp mode. Did not want to move, did not want to drive, did not want to, nothing. I was rolling backwards down the mountain with no power to go back up. And there's cars behind me. I'm like, I threw my, my hazards on. I'm beeping my air horn. I'm like, what's going on? So I pop my brakes. I just, st I said, I can't move. So there's nothing I could do. I got to figure out what's going on, right? I immediately called dispatch. Yo, I just think I blew a dry tire. I'm going to call roadside assistance, whatever, whatever, whatever. Let me check it out. Call you back. Let you know what's going on. I'm not safe. I'm on a mountain on a two-way road. And it's these cars are coming really fast towards me. I got to get out of here, right? I hang up with this fact, right? And I said, let me go see what's up. I couldn't get out on my driver's side, obviously, because it was dangerous. And everybody started going around me because now it turned into two lanes, a two lane going just up the mountain. So everybody's trying to go around me. I'm telling everybody to keep going. I get out, immediately put my triangles, right? I immediately try to put my triangles. And I notice it is not a tire. I am leaking diesel, okay? I, when I tell you I got out on the passenger side and I looked at my fuel tank and I am pouring out diesel fuel down this mountain. When I mean I was on a full double tank, 280 gallons of diesel is pouring out at a fast pace. I mean quick. I am scared. I grab the triangles. I run down the mountain 500 feet. I start putting the triangles out. I'm telling everybody, move, move, move. Nobody wants to listen, right? Everybody's zooming up this mountain, out this curb, like 60 miles, 65 miles an hour. It's bad. And the fuel is just coming down the mountain. So it's 105 degrees. We're in Arizona in the desert. If you spark even just a little bit, this shit is going to blow. Like, it's going to blow, and I am next to it, okay? So I immediately get my stuff out. The, I run back up. I'm like, you know what? They not listening. I'm out of here. I get all my stuff. I run uphill, uphill 500 feet away from the truck, and I call dispatch, and I'm like, yo, it is not a drive tire. This is a hazmat issue. I'm leaking fuel. The drive shaft busted, okay? My drive line busted, disconnected from under the cab, hit the fuel tank and caused a seven inch hole in the fuel tank where now I'm leaking gallons of diesel down this mountain. They immediately say, get off the phone. Get off the phone, call 911, call everybody, do what you gotta do. I start making calls. I'm at mile marker 104, I got a hazmat, I'm leaking fuel, I'm in a truck that look like this, whatever, whatever. I need somebody out here now, right now. They couldn't get nobody out to me for another 45 minutes. Do you know I was stranded on this mountain? See this one guy stop, he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know. But he's like, sit in the car with some AC, I know you've been out here for a long time, it's hot. I sat in that car because I was there for 45 minutes in the heat and I'm worried about this, this truck blowing with the fuel. Highway Patrol didn't get there for another 25 minutes. Do you hear me? I was out there for over an hour before anybody got there. Anybody. It was scary. Like, long story short, I was stuck out there on that mountain with Row Rescue trying to stop this fuel because Hazmat was two and a half hours away because I was in the middle of nowhere. And ADOT and Highway Patrol couldn't stay there for that long because they had other stuff to do so it was me and the tow truck guy trying to stop this fuel from flowing down because it is bad it was flowing down the mountain for five hours five hours until they came and tried to drain it out of the tank and that didn't even help I was scared, okay? When I tell you scared, my life flashed before my eyes. Nobody told me it was gonna be like this. I know things happen, you break down, 
But I was just like in a movie, running up a mountain by myself and fuel is about to blow up. They don't tell you this in school when you get in your CDL. They don't, they tell you about all the money you're gonna make and everything and you're gonna travel and see the world and you're gonna do all this. And they don't tell you that you're gonna go through this and risk your life. And they don't tell you that the four wheelers on the road are not gonna care. And they're gonna disregard your safety. And they're not gonna give two Fs about slowing down when they see a 80,000 pound truck with triangles on the side of the road with the hazards on and the driver outside saying, move over. No, just run me over. I almost got ran over like 10 times by these cars. They did not care. They don't tell you that. And it was a scary day for me. I went to work at seven o'clock in the morning and I didn't get home till 11 p.m., okay? I was, I'm stressed out and I'm rethinking my life right now. Like, what the f 